Aloha, this is Martina Wing, live from Hawaii. Uh, this is my second try. I had some microphone problems, but I'm back again. I hope you guys are going to join me again. I had Denmark, Mexico and Germany already live with me. So this is Martina Wing. I'm live from Hawaii and I'm with the Manor Advocates. Um, I always enjoy so much um, talking about this animal. And uh, these are always my props that fly through the picture. So Stefan is back. Thanks for coming back, Stefan. Um, I hope um, Tara is back too. Um, give me some feedback if, uh, yeah, much better. Cool. So I'm going to have a little challenge because I work with masks today. I have some mask stuff going on. Hey, my mom is here too. Mom, you did it. This is great. Wonderful. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Denmark. Sophia, thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to have a little challenge because my microphone is right here and with my earplug. But uh, I'm going to do my best not to rip this out of my ear when I use the equipment later on. All righty. So Tara is saying hi, mom, to my mom. So this is, is great. Okay, so um, for all the folks that haven't been uh, with me on Facebook Live or watching later and just coming from different directions, I want to give you just a little bit info who I am or what I do. I am a manor advocate. I'm very passionate about the animal and the manta ray. And I live in Hawaii. This is my map. Julia is here too. This is great. This is my map. I always show this is the big island of Hawaii. And I live on this... Um, uh, in this town of Kalua Kona right here and for about 20 years it's coming up my anniversary this month uh, I dive I film the manor I dive with them I snorkel with them I guide the tourists that go to see them and um, I usually talk about these two locations there's one in Keaho and one down, one here at the airport there's Keaho and uh, we I talk about what's happening here within the industry there's a big industry ocean recreation industry to, for people to see the manta rays, but uh, my biggest joy is, of course, talking about the manta rays. Uh, I just know so much about them. I have a lot of time. I'm almost every night with them in the water. So I love to share that knowledge. So, but today I'm not going to talk about my, uh, the manta rays themselves, but I want to talk about equipment. And this prompted last weekend, I saw another article in the news um, that uh, is about the full face masks. These are these kind. And it's really a trend that more and more people are using them. And uh, I want to share the con uh, be part of the conversation that I don't agree, uh, that I don't want to, uh, I don't want to encourage people to use them. I actually want to encourage people to go with a traditional mask that would be this kind, this kind of uh, stuff. And um, this is uh, today's topic. So I want to dive right into this. And if you have any questions during the Facebook Live, let's just leave a comment. And uh, if you're from somewhere around the world, I always like to know where you're from. So leave a comment anyway, where you're from, or if you have any questions, I can answer. But for now, I'm going to dive into um, this uh, comparison between a traditional mask, excuse me, a full face mask and traditional mask. And I um, want to just show you, I'm not going to talk about how to use these guys because I don't want to use, I don't want you to use them. I want you to learn how to use these. And, but I want to give you three things about this mast that people think is good, but it's really not that good. So um, the idea is to have it fully on your mast like this, and then the air comes out of, um, comes in and out on top. Uh, people say you can see on the sides much better and it's easier to use. A lot of beginner wanna use it, but um, especially beginners, they don't even have knowledge about the ocean itself. They should not uh, do it in the first place to use equipment they don't know. Um, and it seems to be easier I don't know if that's so true. So, but here's the big problem. Hey, Carrie, how are you doing? Washington is here too, this is, um, Washington State. Great. So, um, first of all, when we um, have guests at the um, Manta Experience and they want to use these, uh, this full face mask, um, I cannot communicate with them once they put the mask on. And for me as a guide, this is actually a really big problem because we go in the ocean at night, we're looking at these beautiful animals, everybody's nervous to go into the water, and they just... Um, I want to make sure that I can communicate with people. I want to make sure they are feeling good about this and they want to just feel safe. And that's the most important part for me, that people feel safe and comfortable. And we always say we want you to enjoy this and not survive this experience. So um, just for that reason, communication is a big deal. So if you would go out with a partner and you snorkel, you can talk to each other. I think that's actually a pretty big deal. Um, so that's a, quite a negative on this. Um, then the second one is fogging up. So there's some uh, fogging up with um, both masks, but it's easy to solution here on these masks. I've been told I haven't used them actually. Um, you can use this mask without fogging, defogging. Um, 
Not true. I've seen too many customers now over the years that have the mast forked up and we don't want to actually do that. Uh, we, we definitely want to see and have no fork in, in the mast. So please um, don't believe what people say. It's not no fork mast. It is a, they fork up for sure. So um, and then it's super hard to um, fix a problem when you're on the ocean. Um, the traditional mast, you can easily defog. You can just take it off your eyes. But here in this case, you actually have to take it all the way off your head. So uh, that's also downer. Not so good about this mask. Um, and then the third one is a really biggie. So it's CO2 buildup. Um, so what does that mean? If you have the mask on your face and you keep breathing and you do a lot of shallow breathing, you actually have a lot of um, air in here that doesn't move out, in and out of the mask. And there's a CO2 buildup that actually can make you first, gets, gives you a headache. The next one is usually nauseated. You feel like a little sick or something like that. And then you don't want to feel sick on the ocean, you know. Um, I mean, a s solution could be you take your mask off, but I don't want people to take your mask off in the ocean in the first place. And then you maybe fix it, but you're still, you're not in the best place uh, physically to be, um, you're just not good anymore when you have a headache or feel nauseated in the ocean. Then you may, may make your way back. Hopefully you're not too far away from, from the shoreline to do that, but um, this is a really, really big deal that these guys have CO2 build up in within here and because the snorkel is just in and the air in and out i've heard people say yeah there's, there's uh, equipment or better better models that allow that uh, and better exchange of air but um you don't know if you go into the i went to walmart to get this just for the purpose of um, showing you guys what's going on um they only had one mask you don't have a choice so you don't know if it's good or bad and there are really some cheapos out there these days so in general, I would prefer you guys do not use this equipment. Uh, I would prefer you go for a traditional mask. It would be kind of this here. It's a black one. It's a blue one. It's, um, there's another blue one. And there's all different uh, models. I mean, they're all different companies. This is like Sea Sports. This is actually on the, on the cheap side. US Divers, also more on the cheap side. There's a collection we have over the years. And... Uh, this, I don't even know what that is. It's called Visage. They actually fit pretty good on faces. We have uh, Cressy over the years. Um, we've liked really Cressy. But here's the thing. I wanted to give you four points um, to really look into. And I'm going to, um, with Tara, we're going to create a, a little sheet sheet for people that they can download. So when the next time they go on vacation, they have this ready and can remember um, how this is all going to work out, how that works the best for them. So, um, first of all, if you go on vacation and um, you have choices to get the mask, so the first point I want to make is, first, go just go to dive store and rent the equipment. All the stores here in town, like dive stores, Kona Diving Company, Big Island Divers, Jack's Diving, they all have good equipment. So go and rent the good equipment. It's much cheaper than, um, I mean, not cheaper, I mean, might, might be a little bit more expensive on the side if you do it for a full rental, but I think they're 40 bucks or something like that. That's not, I don't think that's expensive. To uh, use this, this is your tool in the ocean. You want to make sure that you have a good tool while you're watching the fishies or the man rays or, um, and have a good air supply with your snorkel. So this would be a snorkel right here. So this is one thing. So when you rent, um, you get good equipment. I'm pretty sure about that. Um, or you can, or snorkel bobs is pretty good too out here in town. And the other one is um, you, exciting topic. I've never heard about full face mask before. Nice to learn something new. Keep my traditional mask. Yes, Sophia, keep the traditional. And I'm going to give you tips how to really have no problems in the ocean. I do this briefing almost every night. I'm going to do here in a second. And I think you're going to learn um, from that as well. Um, so I was talking about the renting the equipment. Yeah, spend a little bit of money on, money on the rental or spend money on buying a good mask. Because all these masks have different silicon and the equipment, you know, um, it's cheaper if you go for cheap, like go to Costco or go to Walmart. It's like the 40 bucks, everything together. Um, don't waste your money on that. They are just not good masks. OK, so a good mask, when does it start? 60 bucks, 20 bucks more. You have a good tool and and you don't have to go much further than that, maybe 60, 80 bucks. Now, then you have a mask that lasts for the rest of your life. If you take good care of it, taking good care of masks would be um, not put sand in it or you know drop it in the sand and then not wash it out so always make sure it's fresh water rinsed after your use immediately 
Um, I always surprised when walk, guests walk up and they have sand in their mask. And I'm like, why do you want to do that on your eyes? I mean, it's going to have in your eyes and it's like an exfoliation on your, on your skin. Um, so that's not fun for the mask or for you. So sand is a big no-no. And then um, just don't leave it in the sun. I mean, have it in the, somewhere in the shade or something that is just protecting the mask. Then this lasts for a lifetime. Really, it does. Um, so this is about um, buying versus renting. Or if you buy, spend a little bit of money. Or if you rent, I think you always will get good equipment. And that's actually quite crucial in this whole equation to have a good experience in the ocean. Um, the next one is um, test it. Test it if it's a good fit. So there are masks that have for wider faces or um, narrower faces and stuff like this. I always look for people um, how wide they are here and then I give them a, to test it, test it out. So this is point number two. Um, when you put the mask on your face, just put it on your face without the strap. Put it on your face. Inhale through your nose. And there should be a suction to it. And that's what we want to see. If this doesn't fit to your face, don't use it. Use a different one. If you go into a store, hey Connie, and is here now too. This is great. I love this. So Con um, if you go, um, yeah, so this would be a good fitting mask if it's just uh, sitting on your face and the suction is there and that's what you want. If you go into a dive store and you buy it, they will make actually sure they test a different mask and width and um, on you to make sure it's a good fitting mask. So this is test number, test number one you can do. But do the test without the strap. That's what most people do. They put the mask on their face and put the strap on. That's not the test is without the strap. But now, of course, then the next thing, and that's, um, let me just look at my notes very quick. Yeah, the, that's number three in all my, um, in, in this teaching. Number three is the strap has to be in the right place and it has to be just in the, um, in a good, not too tight, not too loose. So I wanna, I'm gonna try this without screwing up my microphone. When I put it on my face, Where's the right place for the mask? It is the crown of your head. Do not put it on top of your head. Sometimes it slides up there. As soon as it touches your ears, you don't see my ears. As soon as it touches your ears, it's too low. Okay, so the mask strap has to sit up here. It's a little loose on my end, and I just make it a little tighter. And that's it. So here's a really big deal. It looks really cool today. So if you have the mask on your face, and you think there's some kind of problem, then 90% of the time the mask strap is just moved around. If you have a lot long hair like I have, you know, sometimes maybe the hair is just moving around up and down, then the mask strap just moves around. So make sure that um, you stay in the right place with the mask strap. Now, here's the common mistake that make most people do. I'm going to take this off for a second. <laughs> so the mask strap moves to the wrong place. People think they want to fix the problem because some water is coming into your, ma into your face and to your eyes then uh, they make the mask strap tighter and they make it tighter and tighter and tighter and this is the a really big problem actually because when you make a mask too tight you're pushing on the inner seal so much that the seal breaks even more you know so you make this whole problem even worse so it's really important that the mask strap sits in the right place that's one thing and the second one is that it's not too tight on your face of course not too loose but this is easy to you feel that easily, but don't think because you make a mask tighter is that um, it's going to help you um, not to have any leakage into your into your face. So, one more time, mask strap on. Mask strap has to sit in the right place, right here, the crown of your head, and then not too tight because when it's too tight, it just pushes so much on your face that the inner bre seal breaks and more water comes in. Yeah, I get a lot of smileys today. That I really enjoy that. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I'm going to continue and have my mask on again. Just wait. <laughs> okay, so um, so this was number three. Mask strap has to sit in the right place and not too tight um, and not too loose, of course. And then, of course, you want to avoid any kind of hair into your mask. So if you go, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit, but if you have your hair in here, well, this breaks the seal and water comes in. So just don't do it. Just make sure your hair is out of your face and like this. Now, what do people do with a mustache? Um, well, you either have your mask right underneath your nose if the mustache is not too big. But if you have a really lot of hair around here, right down here, then um, Vaseline is, an, is the solution. You just put some Vaseline on your 
must touch them right here, and then it's a nice seal. So, yeah, so these were the four points I wanted to talk about is that uh, for the traditional mask, just go for that, and then we're going to make a cheat sheet, a little sheet for you guys to download that you know where to, um, how to do it, so you have a reminder if you go on vacation, and then um, the four points, you know, just make sure you get good equipment, rent it, or buy it, buy good equipment, don't buy the cheapo stuff. The second is make sure the mask has a good seal to your face. The third one is the strap has to be in the right place. And then avoid the hair into your leak, leak um, that so there's no leakage. Now there's one more uh, thing about leaking into your mask that happens too. It's called, you cannot smile. I'm going to show you this one more time. I know you're enjoying me with a mask on my face. But if you smile into your mask, uh, under your mask, you get these little grooves right here. So no smiling, okay? No smiling when you snorkel. Of course, that's a joke. It's easy to, to fix when you have a mask on your face and there's any kind of leakage like pooling around water around your nose. Then you just fix it. So how do you fix leakage into your mask? Well, you would be looking down and at the fishies or the manta rays. Then when you snorkel, you just put your face above the water line. Here's the water line. Take your hands, one or two, open the bottom a tiny bit, and you know what's it's called gravity. Gravity helps you here, and the water's gonna run out. Put your face back on the on the face, mask back on the face, and you're good to go. So this leads to my one rule I have when I go snorkeling with people in the ocean. You have your mask on your face when you go in, and you come out with the mask on your face. Do not take this off for any reasons because this is your tool. It's protecting your eyes. So leave it in place, have it in the right place, and then you will be good to go the entire time. Defogging is of course something else you should consider. Well, actually you consider, you should do it. Yeah, thanks Stefan. Yeah, super. Um, so this um, defog solution, there's another thing you should know about that. Defog solution only works just before you go in. Don't put it in 30 minutes early because it dries up and then it doesn't work. So if you do any kind of defog solution, do it just before you go in, not too thick. We use actually diluted baby shampoo, it's super easy. But there's some good, uh, good stuff out there, so sea drops is one of them, um, and you can do it. And then rinse it out, put it in your face, leave it on your face, and don't take it on and off. Cool. This is what I wanted to tell you about the mask. There's one more thing that belongs to the whole equipment, of course, is the snorkel stuff. If you use a snorkel, look for snorkels that have a perch valve. This is something here on the bottom. And uh, if you have it in your mouth, you know, the mouthpieces today are pretty good. Um, they have um, these tabs here. Well, I call them bite down tabs, not bite through tabs. Sometimes on the Manta experience, it's really funny when people are like so nervous and then they just bite through the tabs. But no need. It's just keep your mouth um, around with the lips around the snorkel. You like this. And um, seal it around it. And that's all you really need to know, you need to do. If you have any water in your, ma in your snorkel, then uh, blow it out. This is what the perch valve is for. It would be just, don't go for the really old kind, I call it the 1964 Sean Connery. It would be just a tube, you know. No, today these snorkels are pretty good. They don't let water in on the, on the top. Um, and then when you blow it out on the bottom, you just blow through it a little harder, <laughs> like this, and then the water is going to shoot out on the bottom. And uh, if you combine these together, this is a good, good tool together, then you want to connect them here. I'm going to try this way quick. See here. And then have the snorkel as close as possible to the mask, like right here. Don't have the snorkel on the back of your head. That doesn't work either. And then one more time for you guys. Me with my mask on my face. It's going to be a good thumbnail today, Tara. Just wait. Anyway, and then you put it in your mouth. And you're good to go. Huh. Now you're ready to swim with the manta rays and all the other fishies. Alrighty, cool. This was my Facebook Live today. This is, was about uh, don't use the traditional mask, go for the, tr uh, excuse me, don't use the full face mask, go for the traditional mask. Listen to this uh, short briefing and I think you will be good once you go snorkeling into the ocean. And uh, thanks for listening, guys. Um, this was Martina Wing, Hawaii. I'll see you next Wednesday and talk to you later. Bye-bye.